Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 10 by 20 inch soft pastel-y sunset. A uh, reference photo was sent in to us by a client, asked if we could redo it. I said, oh, of course, and I would love to. So we got the chance to do it tonight and uh, bringing you the video. So you guys are obviously excited about this painting. That's why you clicked on the link. Check the description down below. Find out all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're gonna do it just like this. Hey guys, welcome back to the Paint with Josh studio. Today we have our Bob Ross liquid white on our 10 inch by 20 inch canvas. You can see we've taken the Bob Ross, uh, sorry, we've taken the Liquitex black gesso and covered the bottom, let that dry. We also covered the uh, entire canvas in the white gesso first and let that dry just to make sure that it's the same sort of even surface, right? That's all we want to do. Some of the times with these canvases, we buy them in the multi-packs, right? I buy them in the multi-packs too. And they're not as good quality as the real expensive canvases are. So we have to put that one layer of gesso on there just so we know in our own heads that at least it was done, right? And it, that the paint isn't gonna soak into the canvas too quickly before we get finished working. So I just shook up the jar, whatever sticks to the top lid, it's gonna be about enough for what we need. Now we need to go with our two inch brush, not a whole huge amount either, right? Spread it around, never just start in one place and start to work from there. You'll end up having way too much over there, right? Little things, and then we can start to spread it. And as you spread it and pull it, it's got to be very, 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 very thin, right? If you're flinging paint off each way, you've got way too much paint on the brush. Look, you can still barely even see it. And all I'm looking for is a little bit of wet shine on the canvas. That's all we really need. Don't need a whole huge amount of color. Don't want a whole huge amount of this, for sure. It's going to make it very difficult to paint. If it's too wet and too slippery, it's going to be too hard to paint with. So. Keep it sort of dry, nice, little, thin, 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 thin coat. And you'll see what I'm talking about when we get down around these trees, just how thin the coat we're trying to put on this guy. All right, as we come down and we come down and we come down, look, going over the whole tree right there, only changed it a little bit because we've only put on the smallest little amount of this liquid white. Just the teeniest, tiniest little amount. We're gonna cover the edges because I don't know if they're gonna frame the painting or if the buyer is going to have it framed or just hang it just how it is. So I like having my paintings finished on the edges. It helps, you know, just make it look more complete, less like a work in progress, right? Or like a, just a messy, sloppy canvas, just like that. Don't want to pull too much of that white over the tip top of those trees, but we do want to have our liquid white right down in that colory area where we're going to pick up our sunset way down there. It's a gorgeous little picture that we're gonna recreate of them. They took, uh, I think from New Hampshire, they were on vacation in New Hampshire and took this photo. It's really cool looking and it mainly focuses on the sky. That's why I think we're gonna try to match the sky just as prettily as we can with our orange and yellow, maybe the slightest little bit of blue to create that very, very, very light blue sky. And then a big old red puffy cloud right at the top. It's gonna be fantastic. So into the paint thinner, into the trash can, into the bucket. Shake it all about. Beat the devil out of the brush, get all the white off of there. Nothing's happening now. Dry it off on a paper towel. Dry it off on a paper towel. All right. Now we can really start coming in with our color. Now we're gonna have to layer these colors in there, sort of kind of make them up as we go, right? A little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. Don't wanna have too much red though. Wanna have more yellow than anything else because we can always make it darker. We can't go backwards, right? So we're gonna start in here. Where's that picture at? Let's put that picture up here, see if it'll even stay. I'm gonna start around down in here. Maybe there's a little bit of that color. Don't wanna have too much paint, of course. But we gotta get it to blend. All that liquid white is helping it blend its way out. We're gonna get up here and just let it work its way less and less and less. Blend in with that liquid white. That's what I want it to do and become a lighter color, right? Blend in, blend in. Don't even have to X out all of these little shapes or little streaks in our sky because they could be cool little clouds all on their own, right? And the more and more and more we work up and it blends in with that white, the lighter and lighter it becomes. See how that happens? That white is just a gorgeous little helper. It's our best little helper, that white. Look at that, nice and slick. Got this gorgeous little yellow part of our sky. And that's what we want to try to do with that blue initially, is not have it be super dark blue. And I think we got to go in just a little bit more red, just a little bit down in here, right? Just kind of red in that area, the smallest amount. 
You can always come back with a different brush if you think you have too much paint on the brush or if it isn't blending out as lightly as you thought it might have. There we go. Little crisscross strokes is all we're doing, just in fast motion, right? Then let some of that white come down here. It doesn't very much matter. We're gonna take a little bit of clear and put it down in the bottom here in a little bit. So, we've got our red. Let's get back to that brush that has the color on it. Maybe make it a little darker red in different places, right? Not all the same place. It's not never gonna be all the same color. Fantastic, just like that. And again, we can sit and blend it and make it as soft as we possibly would like. Poof, really cool. We're gonna pop in some little gold clouds against that color back there. And it actually needs to work its way up. It needs to get a little bit darker, just the slightest little touch. Not as dark as down here, right? But the slightest little touch. So then when we come in with our little, our kind of golden yellowy clouds, it's got a, a bit of that darker color to bounce off of, just like that. Again, if we tried to work this all the way to the top, by the time we got up here, it would just all be white because we wouldn't be able to, it's, it's going to lighten it. It's going to blend it. Pull some of that red up. Mess around just like that. That's very cool. Very cool. All right, the more we mix and blend, the more it's going to change. Come up here, get some of that white. Bring it back down here. It'll lighten that color up just a littlest bit. Very cool. Just like that. Now we'll throw in some... Real deep, dark clouds when we get back that far. <clears throat> Let's go wash this brush off because we're really going to try to work hard. <clears throat> really going to try to work hard at not putting too much blue on this canvas up here. That's going to be the goal. Let's see, just very softly again with the brush that we were blending with so there's not too much color. All right, and then let's see. I'm talking about, I want a little, very small amount of blue. So let's take a lot of the white that we have, create our own little pile, and then we're gonna take this smallest little bit of blue and put that in there. Just a little bit. Because I don't know how blue it's gonna be when we put it up on the canvas, right? And like I said, we can always go darker. Can't really go lighter. So let's see what this guy looks like. A Little bit of blue, a little bit of titanium white, just to keep it nice and light. And since we're gonna have a big cloud come across here, let's start back here. Oh my goodness, that is a gorgeous, very super soft blue. Wow. That is the exact color we were trying to go for. <clears throat> exactly the color we're going for could even go for a smidge more blue right just throw a little bit of the darker blue in there because we have all this blue and white that it's going to catch up with all right maybe down in here oh yes all right the more and more we mix these little guys out the softer they'll become i don't want to get too close to the the orange and yellow and stuff with all of our blue all right just very lightly very softly Dropping that light, 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 light blue color on. Very light. So super light. There we go. Just mixing it, and as it mixes with that liquid white, it's gonna have this very, very, very cool effect that's going to take our colors and change them. Remember, start at the edge when we go load color into the brush, because you don't know what it's gonna be like, if it's gonna be real dark in a certain spot or if you've got a glob of it on the brush. So start small because you can always add more. I say it all the time. Just ever so lightly with the blue and white on the edge. Let's see, just bouncing it on and it sort of blends itself. Very cool, very soft bit of blue. Very soft bit of blue back there. Now, I got a nice dry brush. We're going to go into that blue area and really start to make it even softer than it was before. Turn it into silk. We're just going to turn this whole sucker into silk. So soft blue. It's going to blend in with that liquid white. It's going to stay nice. Oh, it's gorgeous. Very cool. Even hard to see that there's even any color on there, right? Very nice. Don't want to come down too far into our yellow section, right? We all know what happens there when we do that. 
I'm kind of tempted to even go just a little bit darker blue, maybe from the corners up here. Really start to just make it different, right? You gotta have differences. Especially with me, any area where we're gonna have a little bit of cloud like that, gotta have a little difference in there. <coughs> Woo! Man, that was a good sneeze. Bless me, thank you. All right, just like that. Very cool, we can start to pop in all of our big clouds and all that sort of stuff. Let me take some of that bluish. You know what we do first? Let's do this first. Take our, uh, since I don't have any more two inch brushes, we'll take a one inch brush and just put a little bit of our liquid clear on the black section of this canvas. Just a little bit, All right? That's even too much. So I'm gonna take that, wash it off, get rid of it. It's such a small amount of canvas that we're trying to cover. You don't need a whole huge amount. I'm gonna switch to the other dry uh, one inch brush that we haven't even used yet. Now I'm gonna spread all this clear, get it to cover that whole little bit of canvas and not have it be too much, right? Anywhere that we put this Bob Ross liquid clear, it's gonna have this very cool little shine when, uh, when it's dry. It's gonna make our water shiny versus our sky, which will be sort of matte colored. Very cool. Just like that, get these far away little bits of trees Something happening back here, and now we got a little bit of clear on our canvas, so it's nice and wet, slick, and ready to go. Let's clean off that brush so we don't forget to do it later. All right, now with that blue that we had, it'd be a little bit easier now to add in just a little bit of glare on the water back there. That's all we really need. A little bit of a different color, a little glare on the water. Bam, all we're gonna need to do is that. That looks very cool. I love how it's kind of in here like this. I left that line like that so we could come back in. Let's say we grab up a little bit of the black, maybe a little bit of the crimson. All right, we'll come back in and we can make little differences now inside, adding more depth, more distance, right? All of these little trees, all the things that are happening down in there little places for our critters to live, all sorts of stuff. And this little round brush makes the most gorgeous little foliage shapes. Fantastic, right? Bouncing it up, very cool. Get these far away things, get these very close things. Very neat. Very, very neat. And we got a couple little bits that are a little closer. Bam. Just come up right above the top of our trees like that. All these cool little things. We're deep into the as you can see right here, there's no, there's not a lot of whole detail on there. It's a lot of um, silhouette. So maybe if we take the smallest little bit of white and we might be able to work in just a whole nother little layer just by popping it down in there, giving it a one, one more cool little bit where the light came down, maybe touched down in here. Just change the color up just a little bit. Just cool little things, right? There's not a whole lot of detail back there besides that. So. Let's take these guys, we'll swipe them up right from the bottom, just flattens them down, makes them dark, gives them more depth, to me anyway. Swipe them over to the side, just like they're a reflection. Don't go all the way to the top, though. Leave some of those guys out like that. Very cool. Now, there's not a whole lot of water line back there anyway, but just for my own brain, I have to have a little bit of just water line. We gotta decide where our land is gonna live and where our water's gonna land, right? So just like that, put a little bit of distinction far away. Remember, we're going to light up this whole bottom bit of black in color. So don't worry about getting a little bit of color on the canvas. But now we, we got to start where our, our water begins, right? Very cool. And we'll probably do the water simultaneously with the clouds when we get to each certain color. Now up here at the top, we're going to have to go a little shade of gray. Let's, let's make a little bit of dark. Get a little black, a little bit of white, and come over here, I guess. Make a little shade of like lavender gray. That, that midnight black from the Bob Ross has this lavender tint to it when you mix it with the white. Very cool, just like that. Let's grab an old nasty fan brush. It's a perfect way to make a little shape like that, right? Come in here, grab up some of that soft purpley bit. It's very light lavender. We put a lot of white with it. 
so it's very light. All right, and then we'll come up here, maybe across the top. Just don't pick our brush up, all right? Stay in there, just like that. Little dark areas, little light areas as it comes across the top, just like that. Why don't we go around the edge, give it a little bit of shadowy darkness in there. All right, then we can come across the top and highlight it, which is the fun part. Take our uh, one inch brush, very lightly and easily, just pulling it down. This is almost like a guy who looks like he wants to, he's just about to rain, just looks like it. He's, he's trying to trying to get up enough little, little water buddies in order to rain on everybody, right? Just very softly, very easily, just like that. Come down, grab a little bit more of that white, Kind of mix it a little bit with the red because it's got to have this red hue to it. So we'll take that white, mix it up, mix it up, a little bit more red. Back into the white until it's sort of about that color right there. Come across like this and I'm just going to start popping in little bits like we're making grass. You know what I mean? We're making big old tree limbs and foliage and all sorts of stuff like that. Now we're going to come in with our one inch brush, go upside down and kind of blend this red up and away from the bottom of this cloud. Just like that. Don't wanna cover up everything. And you don't wanna blend it so much that the red part of the cloud goes away, right? That's why we're putting it up there is it's this gorgeous pinkish cloud. Fantastic, just like that. Now you can always go back in, take little bits of white and go and highlight different places, a little bit of white, a little bit of different color in there. Smallest little bit, so. Take our brush again, working those into cool little highlights and different little things that live inside of our pink little soft little cloud back here. Very, very cool. A little bit more red, a little bit more white though. We need to darken this area up a little bit. There we go. A little bit darker in my mind, according to the picture anyway, right? That's just what we're trying to match, this very, very, very soft pastel-y type sunset. Put a little bit of that red color right just on the edge. Just so people that are walking down the hallway, they'll go, what is that red against that very light blue? I have to turn around and see what's going on over here. I have to. I just got to see it. Got to see it. All right, let's work our way down. There was like a little pop of red in there too. So just take him maybe. We'll just slide him off to the side. Just a little imperfection in the sky is all it really is, right? The more and more we blend it, the softer and softer and softer it becomes. Very cool. Mine is a little bit bigger than that one was, but it looks neat, looks nice. A little soft, fluffy, far away old guy back there. Take our two inch brush, by the way, flatten these guys down by lifting up and then coming straight from this, all the way from the edge across. That's how you make it work. Okay, we're gonna come in here. We need to darken up our shadowy color just a little bit. So how do we do that? We had that black and our crimson and the white. Might as well mix it with this red too. We need to make it a little bit darker than it was. So let's go back to this dark pile right here. All right, oh yeah, that's a bit dark, but you can tell. It's gonna immediately become lighter when we put it up on the canvas, but for right now, we want it to remain dark. And then maybe we have this giant section, and this picture is a bigger ratio than our canvas is, right? The picture is like a 16 by 20 size, and this is only a 10 by 20, so you have to shrink it in. So what I'm gonna do is kind of zoom it in to about how I think the size of the canvas is, Kind of center it and then go, okay, our clouds are going to have to take up that whole top area, right? So all through here, get all these cool little bits, live in there. And then it starts to trail off down over here. And then we got like a little floater buddy. It's going to live over there too. Very cool. Remember, it's got to be thick enough and enough paint that when you drop your color in there, it's going to have room to blend out and grow and have all these little differences, right? So we get all these little things in there. See that? See how it's looking? Bam, don't go down too far because we have to put all sorts of things down below this guy too. And just have him come across however you think it would. All right, very neat. Come back, get a little bit of that same color and come back underneath. There's not a lot of space underneath this guy before a whole nother little bit of cloud came out. Maybe there was another one out there. All right, see what they look like. Come back in very, very, very lightly. Just with the tip corner of the brush is all you really need. Don't lose all the color in between. All that light, all the light in here, all the light in there, don't lose it all. all right, push, 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 push. Little teeny tiny circles. And just like that, we got this giant mass of clouds that's coming across. So remember, these are just the, the shadows of the cloud. 
We're gonna highlight them with different colors. And if you ever think yours just look a little too round at the bottom, you can pull them flat off to the side. Just like that. Very flat, far away little bits of cloud. And I cover our edges with our same color of cloud. All our little differences, do all of our little same techniques and mixing and all sorts of stuff to have them sort of line up just right. Fantastic. Okay, let's do another one over here. Let's take this guy and instead of dabbing him in, let's do it like, just kind of, just sort of shaping it how this other guy looked in there. Man. Cool little thing. Don't want to cover it all. Don't need it to be all the same amount of purple either, right? You take this guy, slide it over to the side. Make him soft, make him different. All these little layers of the clouds start kind of piling up on top of themselves. Very cool. I need a little bit more white paint. Need a little bit of the yellow in there. A little bit of the red too, why not? Just to lighten that color up. And then it would come in here and there's this whole other cloud. It's got a different shape, different color. Maybe he dots off the edge. It's got a couple little guys in there, but nothing too crazy. A little bit lighter of a color, changing it up. Changing the whole look of the sky. There we go. All these cool little things that start to happen, right? Our, our sun, I imagine, is off in the distance over here when the photo's taken, because all of these are lit up very brightly. But the rest of it is not too much, not too crazy. Not too crazy at all, just so long as we have all these little differences in there. Very cool little bits. All right, let's do, we've got our little line of clouds down there. We can pop those guys in. There is one, you guys know me, he looks like a, he looks like a, like a UFO, this cloud down here around the bottom. You know me and my UFOs, I just can't get enough of them. So a little bit of crimson, a little bit of black, just to keep that same kind of lavendery, dark, shadowy bit. And then almost dead center, there's like a, just a little UFO shaped cloud. Maybe that's why they were like, oh, Josh, can you paint this for me? Because I love your UFOs and all that stuff. She didn't say that, but maybe that's why. Right? Oh, just like that. Far off, little shape, very flat on the edge. Right? Almost like a little oval with points on it. Very cool. Soft, 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 soft little thing. Right, taking him, grabbing him from the middle and pulling out this way, then from the middle and pulling out that way. Very cool. That way it'll grow evenly on both sides. There was a little chunk of a little cloud in there. We'll pop a couple in around the top. Just different little colors, little pinks. A little here, a little there. Bouncing in different things. Remember, it's not gonna be 100% accurate to the photo. We're gonna have so many more gorgeous little colors. Woo, it's fantastic. All right, again, take those guys, very gently, pull them in all the way from the edge, all the way across. That way they can't really move on us. Be very cool. Filling in our little cloud section over here, changing up the colors all, a little pink, little yellow. And that's gonna force whoever's looking at it as they're walking down the hallway of the buyer's home, and they're like, ooh, what is going on around there? I have to see. Very, very, very neat. I love how deep and dark our, our trees are down there. We may even get away with it. If we can take just a little bit of green, that sap green. There we go. Just straight up sap green though, because we don't want it to be too bright. And if we use any white or any yellow, it's going to be way too bright. There we go. Get that little touch of green back there. Way off back in the distance. All right. Now, before we go back into here, Let's take a little bit of that yellow and our red. We're going to mix those guys up, create that kind of pinkishy color that we had. A little bit of the white in there. Just a little touch, just to brighten it up. Maybe a little bit more. There we go. Now, if we can get these bristles out of here, what are these guys doing? That's making me look bad. Now we're going to come in and we got to decide where our water is going to live, right? You're going to have little light areas and little dark areas and little things start to happen. 
Maybe there was a little shadow back here. That's why the, the water kind of remained dark. And then it starts to grow. Different little ripples, different little soft little things start happening back there. Different little soft little things start happening as we keep mixing with the yellows and the red to make this orangish pinkish color. Oh, it's fantastic. All right, a little bit more. Don't want to cover up all of our dark areas though. That's where all the details are. In the dark. That's why we're all afraid of the dark, right? A little bit harder pressure where we want more color. Just like that. Very lightly from this side. I don't want a whole lot of color on that side. It's like the sun has got a strain to reach all the way over there, right? Take our one inch brush or your two inch brush, whatever's more comfortable for you. Just start to flatten that guy down, stretching him out from side to side, pulling from the edge. Don't want to cover up all the dark areas, of course. And then we can brighten it up as, our, as we see fit, right? All right, now let's really brighten up that color. A little bit more white into our red and kind of yellowish color. Gorgeous little pink things happening all the time in this color. It's great. Fantastic. So we're going to come back here. Let's try to get back close to our little water line back there. Just start brightening it up. Look at this. Side to side. We're not covering every single dark area, right? We're covering a lot of them, but we're not covering every single darkness. That's not what you want. Just like so, you can keep going and changing, adding a little bit more color, different areas, a little bit pinker, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more white, depending on what you think yours needs to look like. Again, you don't want to lose all those deep, dark areas either. A little bit more white, a little bit more yellow. Come over here, maybe we'll layer it in on this guy. Just pulling in from side to side. Bam, 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 bam. All right, leaving little areas of dark back there, though. That's what we had. That's what we had in the photo. It can't all be the same. It cannot all be the same color. Just like that. Woo, that's a good looking little bit of water right there. Perfect reflection of the sky above, if I do say so myself. Perfect reflection, fantastic, Josh. All right, take one of those two inches brushes, grab from the side, pull it over, making it nice and soft and gentle and easy. All right, in the photo, there looked to be like there was like a little boat out there. So let's see, maybe down here, just kind of push down. This a little strange looking little boat. Somewhere out there, right? Far off little thing. I believe it had a little bit of white kind of highlight on it. We don't want it to be the focal point of the whole painting. That's not what it's about. We just want you to remember there was a little boat out there. And it looked like there was a little, like a little thing. I don't know if it was a dock or a, a jetty or something to kind of hang out on out in the water, but it was out there. Again, based on the reference photo, that's what we have to go off of. Very softly, gently, easily pulling that guy in and out to the side. It looked like it had a couple little, little stove tops or some sort of, some sort of something on him. So let's get the small edge of the knife. There we go, perfection. All right, bam, bam, bam. That's exactly what it looked like in the reference photo. I can zoom in for you and show you. I can zoom in and show you. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna take just the base of that guy so he doesn't move. Start pulling it out. We got our far away little bit of boat back there. There were some houses and things way off in the distance, but I don't, I'm not even sure we can really make the house shape way back here, you know what I mean? It's going to be so far away, there's not going to be a whole lot of detail on there to begin with. This one goes off that way, that way, a little wall, 
on the roof. Let's see if we can't put a little bit of white highlight on him way back there. He's so, so far away. Maybe we'll mix that white with the black, create our gray. Come back here, turn the knife. Just way off in the distance thing, way back there. He doesn't need to be so super bright. He's not the, the focal point. The focal point is the sky, of course. Cool little things back in there. There's all sorts of buildings back in here. And I don't know how many of them we can snag in and try to do. Maybe there's a couple more. There's some sort of other shape, kind of a building back there. Maybe we'll do that same kind of grayish color. What did I say that shape was? Yeah, let's say it's over here. Bam, bam. Again, mixing it, over mixing it to the point where it's not taking over our whole scene, right? It's We know something's back there real far off. Maybe there's another one we can sneak into. Why not? Real far away. Just little basic building shapes back here. Nothing too crazy. Basic building shapes with a little bit of white and gray mixture. And we can just create all sorts of little illusions of little things back here, right? Nothing in there is livable or looks real, real enough. You know what I mean? And that's fine. We're giving, we're expressing how we would paint this painting. With a little bit of our bushiness in here, just to kind of hide some of those things in case anybody goes looking for the real deep, dark details that are way back in there. You got the little bushes that live against the water. Really cool. If it's like a little fishing town or a little shack, Somewhere to go hang out, whatever it is, I like it. It's very neat. Okay, let's take some of that white and uh, throw our water line back in there. Very softly, doesn't even have to go from edge to edge. Really doesn't. We say it doesn't, it doesn't. I think we're gonna have just about a completed painting on the bottom here, guys. Just like that. Don't want to touch our boat too much, but we got our very far away little bit of water back there working its way into our our highlights and shadows and all sorts of things in our water. Right? You can throw in little bits of wave every so often, cut in little details, little things. Little things. And if you don't want all those little things, even though they look freaking rad, you can cut in some more of those little guys. Because we can always take the canvas and mush it back out flat and fill in all these little gashes, right? But that looks pretty cool, the way that they're all like that. Especially maybe if we could get a little bit of liquid white to just get on the top of some of them. I right? don't need it to be everywhere. Don't need it to be everywhere. But just a little, a couple little shimmers of light really cool looking if you ask me just a few little shimmers and little bits of darkness all right you take that one guy that was too bright just swipe him over till he goes away very cool very cool or you can go back into that same kind of color grab up some more of that white and who knows brighten it up in there throw a little bit of pink just change it however you want. However you feel like it's gonna it look the best, that's how you gotta paint it, right? That's what you gotta do. Had our uh, little shoreline there, eat up our boat and all sorts of stuff. Just cause our water line was a bit too big. So I've gone back and shrunk it back now. Now we'll go back over and make that little shoe, shoe shaped boat again. This funky little guy. It's, it's a little cool little flat bottom boat, I gotta tell you. It's very easy to paint, I'll tell you that. Just little details on him. Just so we know it's a boat back there. Okay, just like that. Let me take a little bit of that white, throw it in around the bottom of him. Got a cool little, cool little bit of detail around there. Make you look at it twice anyway. It'll make you look at it twice. 
bit of that darker color in there for the shadow. Cuts our waterline back in. Very cool. Very neat, very cool little thing. Very easily done. Throw these guys in there again. And you can let them hang down below if you come back and swipe them away, right? Or swipe them both ways. I have a little bit of a reflection back there. All right. I'd say the water is about done. That's as, about as pretty as I can get it. That's about as pretty as it gets. Unless we take a little bit of just straight white, but just in some places, right? You don't want to don't want to have that white everywhere. You have it just enough in some places. Dry your brush off. Kind of play with it back and forth here and there to look like little glimmers across the water. Very cool. Very cool, just like that. All right, let's take that same brush. We're gonna come up here and make some clouds now. I finish off the clouds. That one dark cloud, he wasn't very much of interest to me, but these guys over here, they had a little pop here, a little pop there, They're coming in. And all we gotta do is make them soft, just so, so soft, so you can kind of blend them out a little bit or just swipe them to the side. You just wanna have little indications of clouds back in there. Soft, soft, soft little things. Very soft. Off in the distance. Poof. Just like that. Very cool. All right. Let's go back in. Grab that white. Maybe grab a little bit of the yellow. And just come down here with the white and yellow in itself. That'll be nice and bright. Nice, bro. If we can get enough yellow. Jeez. Here we go. Get our little golden clouds to come up really stand out against this little bit. Very cool little things. All you want are those little fine, those finite differences, little small little things. Then when you look back on it, you go, whoa, that looks cool. All right, this guy, he had a little bit of dark shadow in him. We're gonna take all of our, of our crimsony color Try to pull it down that way. And then just, what are we gonna do? We're gonna make it soft. You can mix it up, you can drag it off, you can do all sorts of stuff. Just by playing around and pulling around the color and doing all sorts of things. And that's what's fun about experimenting, right? Experiment with it, pop in a little bit of cloud back here. Just very soft. Experiment with it and see how it looks when you do this or how it looks when I do that. What changes if we, if we go over here, or if we went over there? If we did this, if we did that. And that's the joy of painting, when you can step back and go, man, I just did this all by myself, and it came out looking like that. And you go, wow, just from all the techniques that I've been watching and learning and listening to, like how they actually work. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that? Look at that soft little cloud, like it's rolling in. Very cool, don't wanna to have too much detail on the next guy, but up here on the top, remember we had that one that was gonna be separate. This guy kind of came down, so leave areas for that to grow. Take our white, pop it in. Differences, little differences. So then when we come in and we mix up our clouds, and that white starts to cover over some of that shadow, right, you get these little rolling bits of cloud that come in. Look at that. That is a cool little bit of cloud back there. Having those differences in between. All right, but maybe one of those guys is a little bit brighter. Just like that, just in my mind, it looked a little brighter. Looked like it had a little difference that went out and up and around the edge, right? Very far away. You put little white bits everywhere. Pull them off to the side, you get these super far away little bits of cloud. Fantastic little things. Gorgeous little bits. Gorgeous little bits. All right, take our white and yellow again, see if we can't come over here and just, just pop in just some bit of really bright little cloud area over here. And they look really cool. All right, take that yellow. Bring it down over here, grab some of the white, bring it down over there, or bring it up here and mix it in up here. Just pop in cool little, very bright little golden bits back here. Very bright little things. You can take a clean dry brush, very lightly, very softly. 
because we don't want to lose all the detail. We don't want to lose the color or its place or position. Very cool little things. I like that. I like that. Right, maybe these guys got a little bit brighter. Very cool. All right, all we're looking for are little minute differences and changes in the cloud is really it. Where the sun's coming in and where it isn't. Like maybe the edges of this guy up here are a little bit brighter with that brightish whitish yellow versus just the original white that we put on there, right? So they stand out a little differently from the rest of them. You get the little differences, little stuff. Cool little things, guys. Cool little things, right? Little bits where the, the light might strike it differently and it might just light up a certain way as the sun's going down off into the distance, right? Very cool, very soft, very cloud-filled sky, very neat. Very neat, he said. A little bit more of the white into the cloud there. It's like it's starting to, the more and more you mix it, the more it wants to go with that gray. And so if you can just find that middle ground as it just kind of blends its way into nothing, it looks really cool. Really cool. Anywhere that you think is too hard of a color or a line, you can mix it down and start to just lighten and change everything up. All right, take our clouds all the way from the bottom, swipe them up, come across, get these very soft, far away, little gorgeous bits of cloud. This little UFO guy is my favorite. Definitely my favorite. Far off, way off in the distance. Love you, little UFO man. All right, that's very cool. That's very close to what it is and what it was. And uh, I'm completely happy with the result of that. Just by adding little bits of our kind of pinkish hue, just until I like the way our water really looks. Yeah, little differences is all. Right, and this guy up here. Just any little bit of color we can get off. Just changes it up. And this cool little, it was like a little mini red cloud that was like disconnected from that guy. Just little differences is all. Swipe them over, soften them down. These gorgeous little things happening in our sky back there. Very neat, very cool. Very cool. Very cool, just trying to add our, there we go. Push our horizon back the smallest little bit. Dragging in our color from side to side, like you guys have done a hundred times already. Let me finish our water over here. Gotta finish the edges, guys. And then we'll sign it and be done. That is a cool painting right there. That is one cool painting. You know me, I'd love to chuck a big old monster tree in here somewhere. But it's not my painting, so we can't do that. We do, however, have to sign it. And you guys know how we like to sign the paintings by including our family so it can travel along with the painting wherever it goes. It's basically the only way we get to travel is by flying around, coming to your house, right? Now, very lightly, very softly, just gonna put these far away little birds as part of my signature. So light and so soft that you may not even see them unless you know where you're looking, you know. We don't want them to be popping out straight as part of the, the detail of the painting, right? Just like that, a little bit of liquid white. And who knows, we're we gonna sign this one. It's so gorgeous. So just gorgeous. Put it down here. Maybe we got a bit too much paint on the brush. Let's see. Let's see. There we go. Bam, just like that. Nice and low key. So, well, I'm gonna send a picture to the buyer. Hopefully she loves it. And uh, it'll be on its way to uh, New Hampshire, I think. I can't remember now. Too many things happened today. So, 
until we see you guys again next time, though, check out our videos on Wednesdays, videos Fridays, cool little commission videos like this where it's something that I would never have chose to paint, you know, until we did it. So uh, until we see you guys again next time, take care, have the rest of a good day, and bye-bye.